awakening, which perhaps I've never talked to you about, is that when the Kundalini rises, she passes through various centers and subplexuses. And when she's rising, she makes the sound altogether is Om. But when you try to refract all these different, into different sounds, it becomes from the first chakra, if you start, Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Da, Ni. At the Sastrara, it is Ni. So there are seven chakras, it makes the sound. Now when the Kundalini rises, she has to pass through all these subplexuses. Now as you know, there is, uh, the first center has got four subplexuses. So the Tala is built on four. Then you have six plexuses, we have a Tala on six. Then there is, it passes through the ten, so we have a Tala in ten. Then there is, passes through twelve, so we have a Tala of twelve. Last of all is Shri Krishna. Shri Krishna's place where it has got 16 subplexuses, so it passes through 16 subplexuses. So you can imagine how it works out. At the time of uh, Agya Chakra, as you know, it's only the two matras are there. So one has to play only on two matras, where you reduce everything to two matras. So far, I don't think Indian music has reached uh, that stage where it just plays with two matras. It will be very difficult. Uh, but in the south, I think, they play sometimes with three matras. It's something surprising, which is the triguna, what we call the three matras. So that from four it becomes two, and then in the Sastra it is three, but at the end of it is thousand petals. And when, <laughs> when all these start dancing, the thousand petals start dancing with the permutations and combinations of all these subplexes. So it is so woven into the classical music, the whole awakening of the Kundalini, of which perhaps the modern artist may not be aware of, but it is said Everyone knows that Indian music is based on the first sound, that is Om, the Omkara. So this is how all these talas are based, and that's why you are so overjoyed. Though maybe you may not have understood the classical intricacies of the whole thing, but the whole thing was so spontaneous and elevating your Kundalini so well that it gave you the joy. Ultimately, after all, what you have to have, the joy, and not the intellectual uh, analysis of it. So the whole thing, the sum total of it, was tremendous joy, and we have to thank all of them for that. May God bless you. Sixteen matras you know of Krishna's is divided into two, you see, two halves. First half is the right side and the second half is the left side. So at the se left side, when it goes called Kal, means a lower position, a uh, lower beat or uh, say a uh, milder beat. So from the Shukla Paksha to the Krishna Paksha as you call it, or you can call it from the right to the left and he goes uh, playing on the left side there. So this is the two sides of the uh, Vishuddhi Chakra, very well expressed. And I applaud the Ektala of twelve matras. We have Ektala of twelve matras. And that is, you know, is of the Shiva. Shiva has got twelve subplexuses. And that's how it is the twelve matras. And it's very, Ektala is a very solid thing, like din, din. And sometimes they play it so slowly that between the two there's a big gap. And that's how Shiva's work is. So it's all very, very symbolic. Gradually you will evolve into it and you will see to it how Indian music is built around the basic primordial music. May God bless you.